fellow electronic builders, this is WF7i, Whiskey Fox 7 India, and I want to shoot a little video of my little radio project that I'm calling the MRAD 40. Uh, it just stands for Magic Radio 40. Uh, it was magic to me just because 12 years ago is when I first started really doing uh, homebrew with ham radio uh, gear in a more serious way. And it's just based on the NE602 circuit that I think a lot of people are familiar with out of the Experimental Methods of RF Design uh, book. So I thought I would go ahead and just kind of walk you through a little bit of what I did and do a quick band scan. I'm pretty happy with the results. Of course, there's always things that you can improve on these things, but it's a very simple little radio. And I was really happy to, uh, <clears throat> to put it together. It's actually one that I'd built 12 years ago, um, but it had a lot of problems. And it was actually just some boards that were kind of flopping loose and nothing was really in a box. So I, uh, I did some design changes, I put it in a box, I even put some Manhattan design in it, and, and uh, it just cleaned it way up, and uh, well, I'll just go ahead and walk you through it real quick here and show you. So this is the little 40 meter receiver, uh, based on the NE602, the Allen 386. I'm sure you guys are all pretty familiar with this one if you listen to Bill's podcast or if you do a lot of home brewing and so on. Um, so it's kind of a mixture of... Uh, I guess you call it dead bug style and Manhattan style and sloppy soldering style <laughs> all mixed together. Um, but I can kind of walk you through it here a little bit and kind of show you what I did. So the antenna port is up here, just the little 50 ohm chassis mount. I built a little uh, bandpass filter, which is made up of these toroids here. You can see in a couple of capacitors. And I actually designed this guy on a Puff, a software package that runs on DOS. It's kind of old. Um, but it does a good job for little simple filters, and it's it's really easy to throw them together on there. Um, so I, I did some bandpass filtering because I've noticed with this circuit in the past that if you don't kind of filter uh, coming in from the antenna, that it really seems to uh, perform fairly poorly in terms of uh, selectivity, I guess you could say, or sensitivity. Maybe it's more sensitivity issue, really. Um, I, the, the signals are just kind of weak, and it just didn't perform all that well. Um, the LM386 chip is over here, so that provides the ideal amplification. Um, I've got, instead of the typical coal pits that you see, I actually built a Hartley, and the Hartley circuit is in this little corner here, and this is the transistor, the JFET. Coil is this guy right here, and these are the two tuning capacitors. Um, I ended up spending a lot of time on temperature stability with this uh, VFO arrangement in this, this part of the box here. Um, basically just picking combinations of NPO capacitors and uh, combinations of how I put the capacitors together to kind of make it a little more stable. Um, and I made I got some headway with that. The initial circuit was very jumpy and if you touch the front panel at all here it would just you know tune way off frequency and it was just kind of a kind of a disaster. So I got that stabilized a little bit better. Um, Probably didn't need to use the pill bottle coil. I was experimenting with some different toroids and I saw somewhere where somebody claimed that the pill bottle coil was had a much better temperature coefficient than any of the other toroids and so forth. And to be honest with you, I haven't really noticed a big advantage with that, um, but it worked well enough. And once I got it in there, um, I didn't want to take it out again. <laughs> so anyway, the tuning, this is the main tuning capacitor here, just a variable capacitor I had in my junk box, and this is a fine tuning capacitor here. Um, the range in this fine tuner is only maybe a one or two picofarads, it's really small, but it really helps to tune in the sideband signals, and I, I really wanted that feature in there. And I'm running all this off a 9 volt battery, and I got a Zener diode back in here, which you can't probably really see. Um, so it's actually, everything's running off 6 volts off the Zener uh, and the 9 volt battery. Um, I thought maybe the Zener would give me a little bit more stability with the VFO. Not sure if it really did, um, but a lot of circuits, power supplies, they're using Zeners to kind of clean up the DC. So I figured, you know, it's probably good to try and see how it went. And uh, right next to the box here, I got my original schematic. It comes out of the EMRFD. I'm sure you guys have probably seen that. Front cover EMRFD. That was kind of instrumental, helping me kick off all these... Uh, exploits uh, with building my own circuits, building my own radios. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on the box now that you've seen it. It um, gives it a little bit more stability and I'm going to give a tune through the 40 meter band. some music breaking in. Um, I've got some shortwave broadcast signals that are breaking in every so often. So hopefully I can make a modification to get rid of that. Um, I've already got some filtering on it, but maybe I need some more filtering. That gives you an idea. Um, this will tune down to the CW portion as well. If I can find it. Unfortunately, the uh, variable capacitor doesn't have a stop on it, so it'll just keep spinning around and around. So. <laughs> Pretty sensitive though, I mean I can hear a lot of static crashes and atmospheric noise.
apologize for the music blasting through there. I think it's Radio Havana, Cuba, because I caught an ID a while ago, so it's like 6 megahertz or so coming through. But it only comes through every so often, so I guess the signal reaches a certain point it breaks through. Anyway, I think that gives you a pretty good idea uh, for how it's working. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, at least as a first uh, attempt here. I just barely got it together tonight, so uh, I may make a few more changes. But, you know, it's a simple little radio. It's probably not going to ever be amazing, but um, it was fun to play with. It's fun to get it up and working again, and um, we'll see where it, where, where it takes us. Maybe I'll do another video if I can get rid of this broadcast noise. 73s from West Central Virginia.